Little hats and stuff. <laughs> Little hats and stuff. Little hats and stuff. Howdy, children. Welcome to Make Anything. Stick around long enough and I reckon you might learn something. Cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And I'll be honest, a lot of the things we do on this channel are pretty trivial when it comes down to things. But um, there are some serious problems in the world things that must be tackled. And one of the issues that I could just not stand is the lack of fashion accessories for our little fingers, plants, 3D prints, and all the other naked little things roaming the world. So today, I decided to deal with that by making some little hats and stuff. In case that whole little intro didn't, uh, didn't give that away. So I already showed you what I made and I just wanted to show you how I did a few of these little hats and stuff. So while I've been using SolidWorks for most of my 3D modeling in past videos, today marks the beginning of my venture into Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is pretty similar to SolidWorks. It's a parametric software as well, so you can jump around uh, between early changes you've made and adjust things and have it update later on in the model and things like that. It's convenient, it's easy, it's super powerful, and best of all, it's free to students and startups making less than $100,000 a year, which I guess is most of you. So I wanted to start using Fusion 360 so that more of you out there who want to get into 3D modeling and 3D printing can do so without spending a whole lot of money. As you can see, I made a whole load of little hats and stuff, and it would take me quite a while to explain how I went through making all of them. I'm just gonna show you how I made a handful of these in Fusion 360 and hopefully that'll inspire some of you to try to make some of your own. After all, I can only make so many little hats and stuff, and there's a whole lot of fingers in this world. All right, so the first thing we're gonna model in Fusion 360 is this boater hat, because it's about the simplest thing you could possibly make. I'll start by selecting the line tool and then clicking this right plane here. That means we're drawing on this plane, and now I can draw out a kind of half cross section of the hat. This is the shape that's going to be revolved around this center axis. You can see I turned that axis into a construction line, that dotted line, by selecting it and hitting X. And now I'm going to close off this other shape so that I have a solid form to revolve. Next I'm going to hit D on my keyboard, which will give me the dimension tool. That way when I print it out, it has some kind of real world measurement. So I made that inner measurement 9mm, that way when I revolve this, it'll form an 18mm inner diameter for this hat, and then I'm going to go ahead and dimension out the other walls to be 1.8 millimeters thick. So I'm going to continue adding dimension, the height of the hat here, as well as the width of the brim I'm going to set. I'll just tentatively give these some measurements that I think will be right, and then when I actually go ahead and do the revolve, I can check the proportions and make any changes I want. I'll hit create, and then revolve. The axis is the line I want to revolve around, which is that line that connects to the origin right here in the middle. And then for the profile, I will select this uh, Z-shaped sketch that I created. So now that I can see how it actually looks as a 3D form, I'll go back and edit the sketch and adjust the dimensions of the brim so it looks a little more like what I was imagining. You could already print this, but I'll do a few little modifications just to finesse the model. I'll start with a little chamfer on this inner edge just so it's more comfortable when you're slipping it onto a finger or something. And actually I'll go back and add that same chamfer onto this outer edge, which will make it easier to remove from the print bed when I 3D print this. I can also select this top edge and hit F to create a fillet, which will round out that edge so it's not so sharp. Let's go ahead and edit that feature and make the fillet a little larger. And we'll actually throw another fillet at the top of the brim here. 
0.5 millimeters looks good. And well, there you go. You've got yourself a hat. The next thing we're gonna do is this business tie, which takes advantage of the revolve feature again, but it also uses the other extremely common function, which is to extrude. We're gonna start out with a revolve though, by creating another center line, just like with the hat, straight up from the origin. And then I'm gonna create a rectangle off to the side here. So if you can imagine this rectangle revolving around that center axis, it will create a ring or a donut shape. That's what's gonna fit around the finger. So I'll hit D again to dimension, make this nine millimeters, just like the boater hat. I just decided that 18 millimeter diameter is gonna be my standard for these little hats and stuff. But of course you can adjust it depending on the size of your finger or whatever you wanna put it on. And you can always scale up the model after it's printed as well. Anyway, so I've got that dimensioned and now I'm gonna go ahead and do the revolve feature again. But instead of doing a full 360 degree angle, I'm gonna change this to 270. That way it's open in the back which will give it some flexibility so that it can fit better onto multiple fingers or wherever it needs to fit. Actually, let's do that a different way because that 90 degree cutout isn't lined up with the front or right plane that I'm working on. So I'm gonna go back and change the direction into a symmetric cut and then make this a smaller angle. That's a bit too much. Let's go ahead and adjust that until it looks good. You can just drag this slider here. So that's more or less what we had before, but now I can use the home button here and click this front axis and you can see it's symmetrical. All right, so now we're gonna draw the tie itself, but we need a plane to draw on. The standard ones aren't exactly where I need them to be, although I do want it to be aligned with the front. So I'm gonna select the front plane, but then I'm gonna go over to Construct and Offset Plane. This allows me to drag a new plane and I'll put that right here at the front of this ring where I want the tie to be. Great, so now I can select that plane and sketch on it. I'll start out by drawing a center line since I want this to be a symmetrical thing. And then I'll draw half of the, I guess, knot of the bow tie. Then I can go into sketch, mirror, and then use that line as a mirror axis and create a perfectly symmetrical shape. I'll extrude this little shape and I'll select two sides here. That way I can have some of it coming forward and some of it going back and intersecting with the ring because I want these two parts to be connected eventually. But for now, I'm gonna create a new body. That means these two shapes overlap, but they're not a single part just yet. And this could help me make some modifications before finalizing that. I'm gonna hit F, which is the shortcut for a fillet, and round out all these edges to make it a friendlier looking little tie. And once I have those selected, I can actually just drag this little arrow to visually preview the fillet that I'm adding. There you go. Okay, now for the actual hanging down part of the tie, I'm gonna do the same thing, sketch on that same plane that I created earlier and make this half sketch and then mirror it across. I'm gonna hit extrude again, but this time I'll only extrude into one direction, which is right up to the back of this knot part. And I can join them at this point. And since I only extruded in that one direction, you can see that the knot and the tie itself are kind of separated by depth. On this ring here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a chamfer to this bottom edge, and then I'll add fillets on the end as well as around the top edge. This is just gonna make it more comfortable if you wear this as a ring, and for that reason, I just try to eliminate really sharp edges wherever I can. And there we go, we've got a nice, classy business tie. All right, for my final little tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this cowboy hat because it's slightly more intricate. I will start off again with a sketch, of course. This time I'm gonna go on the top plane and I'm just gonna extrude this 18 millimeter diameter circle as a reference for what my inner cutout of this hat is gonna be. Then I'm gonna build the outside of the cowboy hat around that just to make sure that I have enough space on the inside. For this, I'm gonna create a form, which is this powerful environment within Fusion 360 that lets you model in a more organic way where you drag splines rather than creating everything based on sketches. So I'm gonna create a cylinder on that same top plane and I'll change the view so we can see the different edges that are created here because that's gonna be helpful for sculpting here. And I will edit form, select this top, and then you've got all these transform tools as I said, I'm just starting Fusion 360 myself, so I'm not sure the very best way to do this, but I just played around with things, and as you can see, I can kind of push, pull, and scale 
different lines and create a more complex form in a pretty simple and quick way. Once I created this kind of domed cylinder, I used the fill hole command to create the top of the hat, and that creates this center bar that is ideal for just pulling down and creating that dip in the middle of my cowboy hat. Pretty quick and simple, and I like how it looks. Maybe I'll just pull that up a little bit. And now I can go to inspect, section analysis, and select a plane to slice into my model, and I can see how my 18 millimeter cutout will fit inside of this outer form. It does get a little bit close there at the corner, but I think I can work with this. I'll finalize that form, and now I'm gonna draw on that top plane again to create the brim of this hat. So to do this, I'm gonna start by just creating the outer circle and then extruding that upwards, a lot larger than I want the brim itself to be because I wanna add that little curve to the sides. Whoops, and we wanna make sure that the extrude mode is not set to cut, which it will automatically do when you're extruding into a body. Rather, we want a new body. Now I'll draw on the right plane and create the side profile, which has those little lips that I want. And I'll just draw one half and mirror it since I want it to be a symmetrical design. I'll also throw in some dimensions. I wanna make sure that this bend is 45 degrees. That way it'll print nice and clean without any support material. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and select that sketch and go into the patch workspace and extrude that line. I'll make sure to extrude in both directions, that way it cuts through the entire cylinder that I created, like so. So I'll exit that sketch and hit S, which opens up this search tool. Then I'll just type in split and use the split body command to split the cylinder. And then for the splitting tool, I'll select that second sketch I made. And that's gonna cut the body to create this bottom shape, which is all I really want. So I'm gonna go back into patch, create and offset, with those edges selected, I will just do a zero millimeter offset, which essentially just copies those faces. There's probably an easier way to do all this, but like I said, I'm learning too, so that's the way I figured out how to do it. Now I'm gonna use this thicken command in the patch workspace, and that'll allow me to create a part with actual thickness, that way it'll print out. Unfortunately, it did create this weird edge where the brim bends up. That's not what I was going for, but we're gonna see if we can work with it. I'll just use a fillet tool and kind of try smoothing that out. And you know, that works pretty well. So I'll do that and then I'll also fillet the bend itself so that it looks a little more natural, like a bent brim of a hat. And then I'll go ahead and throw fillets all around just to make the whole shape smoother. The brim looks good, but it's not really aligned with the rest of the hat. So I'm gonna use the search command again and then find the move tool and use that to rotate and adjust this top part of the hat. So I'll spin that around so it lines up, and there we go. All right, so let's finish things off by making this into a solid part. I'm gonna go into the patch environment and I gotta close off this hat form because right now it's just a thin surface. So I'll go to create and hit patch, and then just select this outer circle and hit okay. And that'll close that off, but it's still not a solid body. To do that, I'll use this stitch command and just select everything. And that will make this a solid part. I'll add the brim back in and then switch back to the model environment, use the combine tool to make all of this a single body. So if we look at the cross section now, we'll see that everything is a single part and a solid body. To finish things off, I'll do a revolve here on the center and draw out the part that I wanna cut from the inside. That way this hat can fit on top of something, of course. I'll use constraints to make sure that these lines are vertical. And then I'll go ahead and add the dimensions here. I'll make that nine millimeters like I did with all my other parts. And I'm gonna create this little construction line here just to make sure that there's enough distance. And yeah, it looks like it's about two millimeters. So we should be able to cut this out and print it without any problems. I'll do a 360 degree revolve and cut out that whole inner shape of the hat. Just throw those chamfers on the inside there and maybe some fillets on this outer edge as well. All right, so as you can see, it's still a lot of really simple steps, but compounding multiple steps on top of each other to create more complex parts like this. Obviously, this isn't the most complex thing, but it gives you an idea of what it takes to make more advanced models. Of course, we want to 3D print this, so we need to export the file as an STL, which is super simple. You'll just open up the Bodies tab and 
we have a lot of bodies here that we don't need, but this one that we do want to export, we're going to right click on and click save as STL. You don't really have to mess with these settings, just hit OK and save that out onto your computer. Once you get that through your slicer, you can print the files out. And I got to tell you, these little hats and stuff are super satisfying to print and peel off. It's kind of like bubble wrap for 3D printing. Now for these little hats and stuff, I used some sample filaments and those come on loose coils. So I'm using this neat filament sensor that a fan named Justin sent me. And basically this sensor will let you know if you've run out of filament by letting out a loud beep. I think that's a pretty handy tool and Justin sells them on his website. So you can check that out in the link in the description. And finally, I thought I'd show you how I made the bigger crown that I was wearing at the beginning of this video. I basically just scaled things up in Fusion 360 and then I'm using this large rubber band to create this strap for the crown. I'll tie a knot in one end and then heat up this little screwdriver and use that to poke holes in the side of my model. Of course I could have modeled it with holes in it but this was kind of a last minute thing so this is how I did it. Feed the rubber band through both holes, tie a knot on the second end and just like that we've got a little crown. All right, there you have it. I hope you like my little hats and stuff. I hope that tutorial was helpful. If you guys make some little hats and stuff for your own, make sure to share it with me somehow. Twitter, Instagram, uh, here on YouTube. A big thanks as always to my Patreon supporters for helping fund this video and all the videos that I make. If you wanna make a bunch of little hats and stuff for yourself, you can check out my page at myminifactory.com where it's all available for free. If you don't have a 3D printer of your own, you can also check out my Make Anything store where I sell these prints right here. There's pretty much an unlimited amount of little hats and stuff that could be made. So if there's an amazing idea that you have that I forgot to include, let me know in the comments and uh, maybe we'll have a sequel. Alright guys, that's it for this episode. I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Keep your fingers cozy and don't forget to stay inspired.